Hello and welcome to our pre-IMAX edition of Conversations with Karina. I'm Suzanne Mulligan, and as always, I'm joined by Karina Bauer. And today we have a few special guests with us to give you a sneak peek as to what you can expect in a few weeks at IMAX America. We're joined by Dan Noyce from our hosted team, Heather Goff from our sales team, and Mark Mulligan from our operations team. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. So Karina, we're going to start with you. Obviously, the U.S. recently announced that they are opening their borders to fully vaccinated foreign nationals from November 8th, which just happens to be Smart Monday at IMAX America. Um, you and I have talked a lot about would it happen, would it happen in time? What did it feel like in the IMAX office that day? Well, obviously, there was a lot of excitement in the IMAX office and amongst the whole team and actually amongst the industry. And part of that excitement was just the instant messages that we got on social media, emails, WhatsApp, with people just being so happy that they could finally um, get to the show. So, um, yes, yeah, so we were really excited. Um, a lot of people, I was just at PCMA convening EMEA, and a lot of people asked if we had anything to to do with it and I did explain that had we had something to do with it we might have picked November the 5th um, <laughs> but no we'll take November the 8th we're delighted and it does mean a lot more Europeans um, can now get to the show and we're just really pleased that we'll be able to truly bring the whole industry together. Absolutely. I know for myself, I was actually working in, the, in our home office that day, and it was just texts and WhatsApps and texts and WhatsApp and Googling and trying to find the information. So obviously, it was a really exciting day. Our Teams chats were going off the hook, so that was amazing. And, and obviously, what, what does that actually mean for our attendees, and what do these new vaccine requirements and the new impact, what is the impact on the IMAX attendees? Yeah, I mean, certainly it means that, um, you know, we've got a few hundred um, hosted buyers from Europe registered waiting to come in. Uh, we have a lot of exhibitors. Uh, I know Heather will explain a little bit more about that um, from Europe wanting to come in and a lot that hadn't registered yet because they were waiting to see. Um, and so, you know, from the in terms of industry participation, whether you're an exhibitor, whether you're an industry professional, an association professional, a magazine or indeed our hosted buyers, um, I think it will have a, quite a significant impact on that sort of international element of the show. Obviously, um, the US borders were already open to a large swathe of the world who could already get in. So it really, the major impact is on um, the Europeans and the UK. Absolutely. And just in case anybody is wondering, and um, we do keep our IMAX America website completely up to date with what's happening on the vaccine front and how you can get into the country. So always have a look at that if you have any questions. And um, I'm going to turn to you, Hev, next. So as our sales director, obviously you and our team are always in touch with our exhibitors from all over the world. What are you hearing about supplier, from suppliers about travel and, and what they're looking most forward to at the show? I think, well, we've personally been calling it a homecoming and I think for everybody in the industry that 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 really is the sense that we're getting you know people haven't been able to get together in such large numbers for such a long time you know it's incredible to think that our last show when even us did it was September 2019 um so and you know business is coming back in a lot of countries which is great to see so I think the fact that everybody can get together at IMEX America is just feeding into that momentum and our appointment schedules went live last week and you know we're only on Tuesday of the second week of that and already our numbers for that are looking incredible which shows that the buyers that are coming to the show and, and hopefully the announcements on Friday means we'll get even more people coming um you know those appointment numbers are looking strong already and they're just going to keep growing because we've got another three weeks of those schedules being open before the show starts so of course that then feeds into the exhibitors and their excitement and their sense of anticipation for the show as well so yeah it's going to be a, a homecoming and um a, a chance for us all to get together and for business to restart and for everybody to reconnect after way too long. Absolutely. I've always said that IMAX is like going back to summer camp and now more than ever. Um, Dan, let's talk a little bit about our hosted buyer numbers. As Heath said, we are looking fantastic from an exhibitor point of view. Um, what are you hearing from the hosted buyer perspective and, and what they're looking forward to coming to the show? Absolutely. So first, I'm delighted to say that we've got over 3,000 hosted buyers registered for IMAX America, which is just incredible news. Not only that, alongside that, it's, you know, the buyers are submitting their reimbursements, they're very excited about the show and their appointment making 
already, as Heather said. So we've had so many appointments come through. It's really going to be a fabulous show. But it's more about the excitement. A lot of the, the buyers that we're speaking to and via our intermediaries are just so excited to get back to face-to-face -face business events. You know, that's what we're hearing is the face-to-face -face element is back. People are excited and we're really, really looking forward to welcoming them to MyMex America. Fantastic. I know I can't wait to see everybody. Mark, let's go over to you for a little bit on the logistics side. So obviously, as our operations director, you and the team have been working really hard on bringing this event to a brand new venue. And it also happens to be our first live event in two years. So what has that felt like for you and the team? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're delighted to be to be back in business and, and working on a, a live show. Uh, I was lucky enough to to be uh, out at Mandalay Bay um, in the summer for a site visit, and it was just incredible to feel that that Vegas sense that we were all so familiar with over over the ten years that we've been there. So, on a personal level, super excited. Um, we've made some great relationships already with the venue departments and and local partners and and suppliers. Um, and of course, it gives us an opportunity to take a fresh look at the the show design. Um, so there are unique uh, features in Mandalay Bay that we've been able to hopefully leverage for to improve um, the the guest experience. So, for example, our, our Be Well Lounge, um, we've renamed the Relaxation Reef because we're going to place it in the Shark Reef or near the Shark Reef uh, at Mandalay Bay. So we're we're doing really well in terms of uh, the, the venue partnerships um, and uh, of course we've been working very closely with them on the health and safety um, matters as well related to COVID. Um, so we're putting a really good plan uh, in place for everybody to, uh, to, to arrive and experience as safe as possible uh, show. Could you talk a little bit more about that, about sort of the complexities of organizing an international trade show in COVID times? Yeah, um, it's it's definitely been an interesting challenge. Um, I think the international dimension to our show um, really adds something. Um, we realised quite quickly that uh, we couldn't uh, verify vaccines for international guests. Uh, so we partnered with both um, Clear for their health pass for US nationals and then Safe Expo uh, for a, a vaccination verification portal um, that can accommodate internationals and the wider range of vaccines. So um, having overcome that hurdle, uh, then we're really talking about how to make the experience safe. How do we eliminate unnecessary crowds? Um, how do we make uh, people feel comfortable and not like they're um, in, 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 in confined spaces when they don't need to be? So for a, a show as busy as ours, that has its own challenges. Um, but um, but I hope uh, I hope you'll all see uh, at the show that uh, that you do feel that comfort level. Absolutely, thanks, Mark. Um, has I've heard a lot of anecdotes recently about the team working on the floor plan and what the show floor plan looks like. So can you tell us a little bit about what it's been like planning for a show when we didn't actually know who could get in and what the team's been going through these past few weeks? Yes, it's been an interesting time, as we would say. Um, but even to take a step back from that, um, this is our first year in our new home at Mandalay Bay. So even when we started planning for this year's IMEX America, we were starting in a brand new location with a brand new floor plan. So that had its own challenges in itself. So, um, and then obviously the last few weeks have just been a bit of a roller coaster as exhibitors were making plans and then changing their plans as the, the travel restriction news um, came through. So our priority all the way along though has been to keep the floor plan as flexible as possible for as long as possible so that our exhibitors could keep their options open for as long as they possibly could because we just want everybody that can get into into the states to be able to be with us at the show and friday's announcement like as karina said we would have loved for a bit to have been a few days earlier it still has just come in the nick of time for our european friends and and hopefully a strong contingent of them will now be able to join us and fingers crossed our floor plan is now nearly finished <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that's great to hear. Um, Karina, you've also been having some planning based on absolutely no idea what was going to happen. We've worked very closely together on what was going to happen with our team and trying to get the team out to IMAX. And I've had a lot of conversations in the last few weeks that our team is really what makes the IMAX experience so special. So what was it like for you trying to figure out who we could get in, when we could get in, and how we were going to get them there? Yeah, I think the last uh, couple of years has just taught us that, as um, Heather said, you know, flexibility and agility is key. And so we've had about three parallel contingency plans running um, for um, our team to kind of come on site and um, support and run the show. Um, you know, many shows run with skeleton teams anyway, and then they hire staff on site. That is not how we've ever run IMEX because our team are the people who our clients know our team are the people that understand every element of what we do and when we're on site and supporting our clients that's what we're there to do and we want and need the most informed people um, and people who really care um, to be there doing that so um, even though the board is opening on the 8th we do have 20 members of the team traveling this week to Canada um, in order to spend two weeks there so they can get in for build up. Um, and it's a big ask, you know, to ask people to do that. Um, but everybody without um, fail has uh, put their hand up for that. And now obviously we're looking at who we can get in sort of a little bit more last minute. Um, but yeah, I think it's just been exactly like the floor plan, exactly like what the hosted bar team have had to do. We've just had to keep everything um, sort of running much later than we would have and not make firm decisions and not um, sort of tie things down too early. And we've been able to do that through great partnerships, really, whether it's the hotels giving us flexibility, whether it's suppliers like GS giving us flexibility for the floor plan and orders and things like that. So, you know, um, it, it's really been a partnership um, with everybody that we work with in Vegas and around the world that's enabled us to kind of keep that flexibility for our clients and indeed our staff. Absolutely. I know I'm obviously very lucky being an American. I can get into the country, so I'm really looking forward to, to getting the easy way in uh, as, it, as it's looking right now. So, Dan, talking about U.S. travel, you obviously were recently able to go out to Washington, D.C. for Destinations International. Can you talk a little bit about what it was like to get to be in the U.S. seeing some of our clients and our friends? Absolutely. And firstly, it was just amazing. It really, really was. And it felt like coming home. And I mean that because so many of our friends, our partners, our colleagues were there and the Destinations International and PCMA team really looked after me so it was such a fabulous opportunity to get back across the pond and see all of our friends so closely and the feedback there was just you know phenomenal because everybody was coming to IMEX America and you know some of for some people it was their first event and you know they were looking forward to coming to IMEX America to get more back home again since Heather and Karina have said about homecoming that really is the feeling that we're that we're seeing so it's really really exciting and on a personal note it made me even more excited you know it's the first time I've been across the pond of course since since the pandemic had started as I said the reception was just phenomenal I was really excited and I sent a tweet the other day that's, that kind of summed up my feelings of um, being really excited anyway but Friday's news has just put the cherry on top for me it really has and, and now I can't sleep because I'm so excited <laughs> so it's a positive thing because I just can't wait to see everyone you're trying to get on Vegas time already absolutely. I love it absolutely. We'll, we'll take it <laughs> you don't have any jet lag once you get there you're just jet lagged here absolutely <laughs> I love that um, Mark let's go back to you uh, you gave us a little bit of a sneak peek about what our uh, relaxation reef is going to be like. Is there anything else you can tell us about the live experience at the show that could, could get people a little excited about what they've got to look forward to? Yeah, I mean, I, I won't give too much away, but um, there are a couple of things. Um, the one, this time we've looked at uh, the show experience in a much more sort of scientific way, I think. So uh, rather than just create a seating area with chairs and tables, um, we've tried to really look at the the purpose, what what people are using these areas for. So, for example, we've created uh, what we're calling the IMAX Work Lounge. Um, and this is a space that's not to necessarily to sit down and have your meal, but it's a place you'd go for a bit of quiet. You can go inside one of the meeting pods, have a private meeting, a phone call, do your emails, whatever you might need to do. So a very specific purpose. It suits a need that we know is there for people inside a busy show. So hopefully that's something people will uh, will appreciate um, and enjoy that the, the possibility to do that. 
Um, another new area to look out for is our People and Planet Village. Um, and this is really a place for um, where we address uh, sustainability, CSR, uh, diversity, equity and inclusion. Um, we have a number of partners uh, exhibiting there, uh, representing uh, those disciplines um, and some education going on as well. So there are a couple of new features out there. Um, I think otherwise the hosted buyer lounge um, uh, will be uh, obviously redesigned in a new venue, but um, almost double in size this uh, this year um, and have a, has a really nice aesthetic to it. And um, yeah, some musicians even to keep you entertained in those quiet moments. Fantastic. I know I'm really looking forward to participating in the KLH Clubhouse build, which is a clubhouse that's going to be built on the show floor for a wonderful little girl called Luna. So hopefully any of our live attendees, you can stop by and join us there and give your hand at building a clubhouse, which I've never done before. Um, Karina, we're going to end with you. Um, obviously, we've talked a lot about what this has meant for the IMAX team, what it means to be going to Vegas in a few weeks. But what does it mean to you personally and for the industry? I know you've worked really hard over the last 20 months on advocacy to try to get the world to see why business events are so important. So what does it mean to you that the US has opened and that we can finally have our homecoming again in Las Vegas? Yeah, I think um, the US finally um, opening their borders has had a really big impact globally, actually, on the sort of sentiment and hope um, for our industry. Um, and in a way, it's an outsized impact um, because the US is such a significant marketplace for all of us. Um, the sign that the US is now opening really is a sign of confidence and positive momentum for the whole world. And I think a lot of other destinations that are still closed will look strongly now at how they can start opening. Um, so I, I think that's, re I think it was just really, really important for the industry. It feels like, okay, we're truly getting back on track now. And I think that's also why people are so excited for IMEX America. I mean, of course, we are excited for IMEX America, but we're also excited, not just because it's what we do, but because we can see how important it is for the industry. Um, you know, I have... Um, is talking to the exhibitors every day. Dan speaking to the intermediaries and buyers. Dan was at DI. Um, I have just come back, as I said, from Lausanne. And everybody at all these events are coming to IMEX America. And they're excited not just to see each other, but because they know it's the kickstart to business, um, to business getting back in 2022 and beyond. Um, and so I think for us, it will be actually quite emotional. I'm not sure amongst here whether there'll be too many dry eyes on the first morning. We'll try. But, um, but you know, just to see people getting back together I think it will just be really really special to see that happening um, and as Heather and Dan said you know the appointments are going really well so we know the buyers have serious business to place and really that's what it's about they're, they're coming to talk proper business and that's why the exhibitors are coming that's why the buyers are coming and then the cherry on the cake is that they haven't seen each other and and you know we're a sort of we're a global family aren't we so um, yeah so it'll be so we're, we're delighted we're excited it's three weeks um and counting and um you know we're in the sort of normal run up to the show and that feels amazing it does feel amazing it feels very busy i was a little bit out of pre-show mindset but i've gotten right back in so thank you all for joining me this morning um and thank you all for watching and we're very hopeful that we'll get to see you live in person at imax america november 9th 10th and 11th at the mandalay bay but if you can't join us live, you can join us on the IMAX Buzz Hub live from IMAX America. We'll be airing on Tuesday and Wednesday mornings live from the show floor, and you'll be able to see me and many members of our team showing you sneak peeks, what's happening on the show floor, as well as live education um, and some fantastic panels. So we'll either see you IRL or online. Have a great day.